This fall, the state is formally gauging the interest that is out there in developing so-called advanced nuclear energy technologies in New York, which has become a major focus of the Hochul administration over the last year as it grapples with how to achieve the greenhouse gas emission reduction goals that are enshrined in the 2019 Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. For more on this request for information and how nuclear energy could fit into the state's power landscape moving forward, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Doreen Harris, President and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Welcome back to the show, President Harris. I'm pleased to be here. Well, we're pleased to have you. So this is a request for information, or RFI, which represents a formal attempt at identifying entities already pursuing or interested in a potential role in advanced nuclear energy development. But as I mentioned at the top, this is something that the Hochul administration has clearly been interested in for more than a year. So what sort of informal interest or feedback have you been collecting already? Well, you're correct in saying we've, we've really been kicking off a number of work streams that do circle around the topic of this specific technology. Certainly, we, at the governor's request, convened the Future Energy Economy Summit in September in um, Syracuse, which was really focused on, on three primary objectives. Um, one was to really talk about the ways in which we can scale up the deployment of renewables across our state. Um, we have a great need to increase the deployment of renewable electricity for sure, but also to begin to talk about the technologies that would necessarily complement those renewable resources. So, so certainly ways in which we could accelerate the deployment of any kind of carbon-free power generation technologies, including new nuclear technologies. And then the third part of that was really a great opportunity space, which is the increasing need for electric load to be served in our upstate communities via large users of electricity, like the Micron facility that is obviously uh, going to be operating in the Syracuse area. So, so that certainly was a forum um, the governor um, called for and, and spoke at, but also we have a number of other processes underway where we're, we're talking about these types of technologies. The Public Service Commission has a proceeding underway really looking at the ways in which we will reach the zero by 40, as, as it were, um, goal within the climate law. In addition, um, NYSERDA kicked off the state energy planning board process, and, and so that's another way in which we're engaging in long-range planning. So all that to say, um, there's a lot going on um, in the world of zero emission resources. Advanced nuclear may be a central aspect of the ways in which we advance toward that zero emission grid. And that's really what we're here to do is to put multiple pieces of information and analysis out so that we can begin to triangulate around what might be an appropriate policy approach the state could take. Well, moving forward then, what are some of the questions you hope to get answered by this request for information? There was a uh, draft blueprint um, for a master plan that was issued at the time of the energy summit in, in Syracuse. Um, we received comments on that draft scope of work, as it were, or table of contents. So we're, we're going to be working really to advance what will be I'll say multifaceted, longer term uh, planning exercise um, as we advance that blueprint through a master planning process. That's kind of one thing that we closed out intentionally from a comment perspective because we also wanted to better understand who might be interested in a potential role or maybe working in the area of advanced nuclear technologies already. And so that was the subject of the RFI that was recently issued and is open for comment now. This is really looking at the broader ecosystem that exists or may exist relative to advanced nuclear technologies. So this is everything from who might use this type of power generation, um, whether they would need the electricity, the heat coming from it, et cetera. Who might be interested in contributing to this from the perspective of the supply chain. There is a major economic development opportunity with advanced nuclear 
technologies, not just the power generation that they provide, but also the economic development potential that may exist. So that's the second area we're interested in. But we're also interested in host communities. We're really focused in the case of potential siting of nuclear reactors in the upstate area generally, but are there host communities that would sort of raise their hand um, either for a project or a supply chain opportunity as well? It is the case that we don't have a situation in which we've really pursued nuclear technologies in, in a while from the perspective of innovation. So what is the status of our workforce and what might be needed to build up that workforce around a potential policy initiative? And then, of course, just other related companies, companies that may develop or supply technologies, companies that might may finance or fund these projects, and ultimately, what is the status of the research and development associated with, with the technologies as well? So all that to say, um, this is us um, putting out there a wide swath of requests so that we can better take stock of the landscape of this technology and its potential application. So it's important to note um, the comments are preferred by December 16th in response to that RFI. It's not that the RFI will necessarily close, but we are really wanting to provide a timeline in which we can take information in in the first phase and, and begin to act on it. Well, before we move on, let me reintroduce you for listeners just joining us. This is the Capitol Press Room, and we're speaking with Doreen Harris, President and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, which is soliciting input on the development of so-called advanced nuclear energy technologies in New York. And you talked about the various areas of information that you're looking for responses on, such as uh, potential host communities, uh, entities that are interested in maybe financing this, as well as uh, companies that are looking to develop and operate this technology. Ultimately, though, if you don't get a wide range of responses to these various components, does that mean you won't be able to proceed with new nuclear projects in New York? Or are you just taking this process as a chance to gather information as you explore your different nuclear options moving forward? Yeah, this is this is a situation in which I consider it a bit of an open-ended uh, circumstance. Of course, the information that we receive will inform our next steps. It's not going to determine exactly our path forward one way or the other but it will definitely inform sort of the state of the market. So, for example, if um, we heard from many host communities as opposed to zero host communities, that would be a good indicator, you know, relatively speaking, of, of where that market exists. Uh, but if we heard from zero host communities, it might also mean that we could do a better job of outreach and engagement um, on a local level, as opposed to something like an RFI to uh, to take in interest and um, input. So this is, as, as I think, I hope would be understood, but I'll reinforce, this is a multi-year complex uh, operation and one that we need to take in a stepwise manner. Currently, as part of this request, you're only looking for information about developing nuclear power in areas north and west of the lower Hudson Valley. And your office told Newsday that this was because of the significant load growth expected in the near term in central and western New York, referring to Micron's plans in the Syracuse area and the potential AI technology projects in the Buffalo area. And we can get to the demands of those projects in a second. But especially since the Indian Point project went offline, the New York City area is overwhelmingly reliant on fossil fuels. And while there are plans to connect this population with more renewable energy sources in the future, those efforts are not guaranteed, as we've learned over the past year. So why exclude downstate from new nuclear developments at this early stage in the planning process? Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you asked the question. And and I, I would say as a general matter, this is um, what you'll hear from me is consistent with with the information we had provided to Newsday in that when I think about where we sit today, as described, this will be a multi-phased, multi-year uh, evolutionary 
piece of work. Um, and ultimately, where we sit today, we see the near-term opportunities for advanced nuclear centering around these large loads that we see um, siting in the upstate region. Um, it's not to say that it's the end of the road with respect to other considerations, but we do have um, much activity going on to really address the needs of New York City as it exists today with, of course, our offshore wind projects as well as um, transmission projects of various sorts. Um, those projects are focusing on New York City, right? In this instance, we're focusing on another part of the state um, and, and that will evolve over time. So does this RFI mean then that we're precluding development of new nuclear technology in the New York City area, or just that, like you're saying, you're looking for more information about the upstate possibilities at this point? Yes. Yeah, so for the, the near term, i.e. the work that we are doing now centered on our strategy rel relative to the state of the market, we are focusing upstate. And are you expecting companies like Micron, which are developing energy intensive projects upstate to have some sort of buy in on, on new nuclear power and, and to embrace this as a way of powering their projects moving forward? Well, when one really looks at this from a national and, and in fact, global perspective, it is the case that these projects are being developed in ways that are, I'd say, uh, different than we see renewable electricity being developed um, because of the fact that at least advanced nuclear technologies come with a, a set of operating characteristics, if you will, generation production characteristics that are quite well suited um, to serve these large loads like semiconductor manufacturing, like AI needs like these hyperscaler data center types of operations, all of which require not only a large amount of electricity, but also what we call firm uh, capacity, meaning that they deliver um, literally 24 seven in an extremely um, reliable manner. So, so this is what's I think pretty unique about this is that it does seem, and one sees this from a commercial perspective, that there are um, strong, there is strong market interest from the private sector, from the Microsofts of the world, the Googles of the world, et cetera, to find ways in which they can not only cite um, their load, but also contribute perhaps to the generation, um, in some cases from advanced nuclear technologies. So, so this is one of the reasons that our RFI is really focusing on these end users, because we do believe it's a potential value proposition for the deployment of advanced nuclear technologies for New York. You've talked about this as a multi-year process, but do you think new nuclear projects could be stood up and operational before 2040 when the state has a mandate to basically stop utilizing fossil fuels for electricity? Uh, for sure. I thought if you were going to ask me with 2030, I, I, I would have a, probably a different answer. But um, these are long range planning exercises, no doubt. But they are also te these are also technologies that much like any large infrastructure project take many years to come to fruition. So when we begin work like that, which we are having today or discussing today, I think it's very important to convey the fact that this is not a tomorrow thing. This is us uh, taking stock of the market so that we can be better prepared for the longer range goals within the climate law. Um, because it is not the case that you can decide um, you know, how you want to approach a large infrastructure project a, a couple of years before a goal um, is, is due, so to speak. You really need to be thinking about it, in some cases, multiple decades beforehand. And finally, uh, Syracuse dot com slash Syracuse Post Standard reported that NYSERDA does not plan on uh, publishing the responses that you guessed from this uh, request for information. Is that accurate? And if so, why the lack of transparency? Well, in this case, we want to have the opportunity to um, take in information in a manner that can help us uh, not only advance 
connections and information to allow these policies to take shape, but also to do so in a manner that does not, um, I'd say, impact the confidentiality of the respondents. And in this case, we're looking for information that may be, uh, in some cases, commercially sensitive, for example. Um, for example, a developer of a nuclear technology may not want to expose to its competitors what its overall strategy may be for technology development. So in doing this, it is not the case that it's secretive from our perspective, but rather a goal to take in the most objective, comprehensive information that can inform our next steps, including our master planning process, um, which much like our master plan for offshore wind will be a multi-year, very public, very, um, I'd say comprehensive analysis of, of the resource. So this is information that we are excited to use to inform those processes um, down, down the road. Do you have reason to believe that approach to restricting the disclosure of that information is compliant with the freedom of information law? Because we saw with requests for information about, say, developing downstate casinos, that the responses were publicized but heavily redacted. We obviously follow the FOIL rules very carefully and have designed this, right, to, to achieve the outcomes that we're describing. Obviously, I'm not going to speak to legal matters, but but understanding that we're we're certainly compliant with FOIL. Well, we've been speaking with Doreen Harris. She is the president and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. President Harris, thank you so much for making the time. We really appreciate it. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by Beyond Plastics, which supports the Packaging Reduction and Recycling Infrastructure Act, working to cut plastic packaging in half. Plastics that cannot be recycled end up burned in incinerators, buried in landfills, or polluting rivers and the oceans. More information at beyondplastics.org.